Men should not be criminalised for paying for sex in Scotland. If the Scottish Government's proposal becomes law, it will harm sex workers and damage public health. Left unable to work due to coronavirus, sex workers are now facing the prospect of a further attack on their livelihood. By pushing the sex industry further underground, the law would force sex workers to rely on more aggressive and abusive clients and third parties. It would see a drop in living standards, more isolation and greater stress for sex workers. The law would also risk increasing the rates of HIV and STIs among sex workers and their clients. Sex workers must be brought to the forefront of decision making, rather than cast further to the margins. This is only possible when we acknowledge the problems caused by treating prostitution as only a form of violence against women. Well, to debate her arguments, Anastasia joins us in the studio alongside the businesswoman and SNP activist Suzanne McLaughlin. Thank you for joining us both. Um, Anastasia, if we don't criminalise men who use prostitutes, um, aren't you protecting men who use women? I definitely don't agree that that is a way to protect men in any way. I think that the criminalisation of clients actually endangers women who do do sex work here in Scotland. It pushes them further underground, it removes and creates, it removes them from essential support services and creates barriers to justice should they become a victim of violence. It also has a damaging effect on public health, which is something that the consultation seems to not be taking into consideration, which at the moment, in light of COVID-19, seems extremely surprising. Uh, Suzanne, if sex workers are saying this law is putting them at risk, shouldn't we be listening to them? We should be listening to women who identify as sex workers, certainly, as part and parcel is listening to anyone, but especially the women who have exited and the women who are survivors of prostitution. Now, not just myself here, um, talking about the United Nations, we're talking about there's reams of studies through the years. Prostitution is in and of itself a violent act by men against women. Now, Absolutely, my first priority is certainly not keeping men safe, not at all. What we need to do is have a sea change in society, what is deemed unacceptable to buy women. There is no way for a woman to be safe within prostitution. That's the bottom line. So what we need to try and do is create a situation where we, we change how society views um, prostitution. For example, I'm sure anyone has had an urge at one time, someone annoys them and they think, I'd like to punch them in the nose, but we don't because we live in a civilised society and you realise if you punch someone in the nose, there's consequences. You're going to be arrested, you might lose your job, there's going to be a stigma in society. So you think, hmm, do we completely stop it altogether? Certainly not, there will still be fights outside bars, not, you know, um, and things. But we, you know, we recognise as a society that's an unacceptable way to behave. To treat women as a commodity, like a hamburger, something else you buy, you know, that's, it's unacceptable and we okay. need to change. So, honestly, we, we shouldn't be treating women as a commodity and, and um, particularly we, we should be perhaps trying to develop them into safer lines of work. Mm. So, I've worked with sex workers for over 12 years now, globally and here in Scotland. Sex workers do see their work as a form of labour and actually see that the fact it's not treated as a form of work exacerbating the harm that they face and actually putting them in danger, not necessarily the men who are paying for sex. So, for me, the the issue here in Scotland currently is that sex workers are not afforded labour rights, health and safety frameworks and employment protection like other workers. The consultation puts into law a further level of criminalisation which pushes the industry underground and makes sex workers rely on more dangerous third parties, potentially also more dangerous clients given their need to hide from state services in order to conduct their work. Can I just ask Anastasia, is your view that prostitution is in and of itself an empowering act for women and a, a job that they want to do and you know that this is this is empowering I mean that's a perfectly valid argument but it's not an argument any feminists would yeah, make. And it's definitely not so, the argument that I actually come no, from. No that's great. So, so, so I'm just trying to get what is your argument in response to that? My argument is that sex work exists that women engage in sex work regardless of whether they find it a choice that makes them feel empowered or not. Sex work exists so we must keep people who are in it safe and we must look after our public health as well. The proposals within the consultation both actually exacerbate harm, reduce safety no. and they damage public health. And that has actually been shown, Suzanne, in countries where this model exists. For example, in Northern Ireland, in Ireland, in France, 
Amnesty International did a study that actually showed that this increased violence by 90% against what, sex what, in workers. Which model, the Nordic model. Well, and this consultation, and this consultation is not actually what's asking a consultation is asking people what sort of model. Now, certainly the model I would be proposing would be a new Scottish model. We can do things better. Certainly it would look more like the Nordic model than the New Zealand model, which has is, is failed miserably, even according to its own committee. It's looked into it's looked into its own by its own committee looking into it is failed and all of its own standards. The simple fact of the matter is that prostitution is violence against women. And you know, certainly if you're a, a, a free ranging capitalist that you think everything is and can be and should be for sale. Well, that's certainly an argument some people make, but then I'm afraid that we're never going to reach a, okay. a, a, okay. a discourse on that. But, because but, but if you, shouldn't th be for sale. there is a concern that you drive it underground, you are making it uh, making less it safe, unsafe. and that's what may happen. Absolutely not. What we need to do is look, for example, I am against Trident. I would have it removed from the Banks of Clyde tomorrow, right? I recognise, though, that that would be a cause of concern to the people that work at Faz Lane Base. As a society, it's up to us to make sure that they are recompensed, that they're helped into other jobs, that they're not suddenly unable to feed themselves. As a society, we can do better by women than expecting them to put themselves in danger. And that's the simple thing. Prostitution is dangerous. It's not the oldest profession okay. in the world. It's the oldest oppression in the now, world. By, by criminalising it, however, Stan, you increase the danger within the profession. New Zealand has said that you said you, no, no, New Zealand is saying that that hasn't that that's failed. Actually, New Zealand decriminalised all forms of adult consensual sex work in 2003. It was reviewed by an independent committee three who, years who later. Who themselves said an independent committee that it said, wasn't meeting its own okay. standards. OK, finish, finish that point. OK, so it was reviewed by an independent committee who found that there was no shift in the amount of people who were selling nor buying sex. What there was a shift in was that women felt more safe within their work, more able to access health, justice and safety services okay. and to access the police and access the courts if they experience violence. Uh, just uh, very finally, you... Presumably both identify as feminists. You, you used the word feminism earlier on, oh, and I'm yes, sure you would absolutely. identify as. So it, if you're both feminists, who's right? Well, there is no way on this earth that any feminist would tell you that prostitution is safe. Even Anastasia herself is saying that. That's why she's talking about further danger if it's so underground, more abusive men. There's, so f there's just no way that prostitution but can feminist, ever... I didn't interrupt you, Anastasia. There's no way on this earth that prostitution can ever be framed as a safe okay. way for women. Let's face it, the women who are by and large I... desperate to feed themselves or are okay. acting through drug addiction, child abuse, very, rape... Very it's... briefly, Anastasia, just okay. on that point, the feminist argument, sure. very briefly. As a feminist, I support all women's choices, but what I support even more so is women to be safe in those choices. The proposals put forward in this consultation reduce safety and the increased okay. violence Lack in sex workers. Choice, Anastasia. And, there, and there I'm afraid we'll have to leave it. Thank you both for Thank joining. you very Thank much you. indeed.